Hello there, I'm Dan, and welcome to another video on RetroTech. This time, we're going to be looking at the iMac G4, one of the most truly iconic computers that has ever been created all the way back in 2002. Building on the reputation of Apple's first iMac, the chunky one that revolutionized personal computing back in 1998, Apple continued their unique and iconic design philosophy with the release of the iMac G4 in 2002. By the way, if you would like to see a retrospective on the iMac G3, don't forget to subscribe as I have an inbox iMac G3 ready to be used. The iMac G4 saw one of the biggest improvements and advancements to their release catalogue, with this being the first iMac with a 15-inch LCD display and a resolution of 1024 by 768 that would be mounted onto a fully adjustable arm situated above the half dome containing the optical drive and logic board. Under the hood, the iMac featured a 4th gen PowerPC G4 7450 series, a single core processor clocked in at either 700 or 800 MHz. An NVIDIA GeForce 2 MX graphics card with 32 megabytes of memory was also installed. The iMac G4, at least the original ones, also supported up to 1 gigabytes of 133 megahertz RAM and either a 40 or 60 gigabyte hard drive. There was also an option for an airport card, which we don't have on this model. On the back of the half dome, there are a plethora of ports, such as one mini VGA, three USB 1.1, two Firewire, a 56K modem, Ethernet, Apple's 2.5mm Apple Pro speaker mini jack, a headphone jack, and an audio input. On the front of the half dome, there is a flap that conceals the disk drive. Models could be configured with a super drive that could burn both CDs and DVDs, which is pretty novel at the time. Furthermore, when combined with iMovie and iDVD, the super drive could produce professional quality DVDs at a fraction of the cost of competitors. On the top of the dome is the adjustable arm. The cantilevered metal arm allows users to precisely place the display in the best position for their needs. I think Christopher Finn of Macworld summed it up perfectly by saying the arm was impossibly, magically smooth and preposterously stable, like no other piece of engineering you've seen before. And over 20 years later, the adjustable arm is still secure and allows for full fluid movement of the display, which is just a testament to Apple's engineering. You also didn't have to pay an extra £400 for the privilege of raising or lowering your monitor. To switch on the iMac, you would have to reach around on the left-hand side of the half dome, locate the flush fit button and give it a little push. You were then greeted with a 15-inch LCD TFT display that was twice as bright and three times as sharp as the old-fashioned CRT displays. To quote Steve Jobs at the time, he said, The new iMac ushers in an age of flat-screen computing for everyone. The CRT display is now officially dead. Which wasn't strictly true, seeing as Apple released the eMac, a budget Macintosh computer for the educational market, only a couple of months later. If you're interested in learning more about the eMac, please check out my channel as I have recently made a video on that. For this video, we're going to be using Mac OS X Panther 10.1.2, as the seller I bought the iMac off just happened to have the original discs that came with the system. Once the operating system has started up, along with the normal swath of software, the most notable software that was pre-installed on this iMac was iPhoto, which was debuted on the same day as the iMac G4. There were other notable programs available such as Apple Works 6, PCalc 2, WorldBook Encyclopedia, and Automatic, a 3D action game to demonstrate the capabilities of the GeForce 2 MX graphics card. As you've probably noticed, there are also two speakers included with this setup. This iMac came with the Apple Pro speakers, which, as I alluded to earlier, has the 2.5mm audio jack. We'll be having a demonstration of them later on in the video. All of this was an amalgamation of Apple's vision to use the iMac as a digital hub, something that could be the centerpiece of a household, which could be used for productivity and recreational use, such as accessing the internet, communicating with others, listening to music, viewing photos, watching movies, and playing games. Now, all of this did come at a price. Depending on the model that was purchased, you'd be looking at a price ranging from £1,149 to £1,599, which is between £2,057 and £2,864 adjusted for inflation. Now, before we finish the video, let's have a demonstration of those speakers, have a look at what applications are installed by default, and then play some Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2.
I have a feeling that this is going to be a nice little project machine. I want to try and squeeze as much as I can out of it, so I'm definitely going to upgrade to an SSD or a blue SCSI that everyone seems to be raving on about these days. There's also the options like trying to get Linux up and running on the machine, inspired from Crazy Ken over at Computer Clan and Sean over at Action Retro. It might also be an idea to try and squeeze a Raspberry Pi into it as well. But what do you think? What sort of projects could I do with this iMac G4? Let me know in the comments section below. All in all, Apple's admirable attempt at creating a unique computer that became the digital hub for hundreds of thousands of households around the world had solidified and redefined what a computer should be and what it should do. Now, whether it is fortunate or unfortunate that this quirky design only lasted for two years, I will leave that for you to decide. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you'd like to watch more content like this and about other retro tech, tech reviews, repairs and DIY projects, be sure to check out my channel and subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TheRetroTech. And as always, thanks for watching.